Now to a story you'll see only on 10. John Hinckley Jr., the man who tried to kill President Ronald Reagan, speaks out about his mental illness and how he wants to move on. And Ashley Knight is here in the studio with this exclusive interview. So Ashley, you just spoke with Hinckley. How does he intend to move on from nearly assassinating a president. Well, he's trying to move on, but unfortunately public perception is preventing him from doing that. He says he lives in Williamsburg right now without any conditions put on him by a federal court. It's been two years since a judge granted him unconditional release. He had been living under conditional release since 2016 up until 2022. We talked with him today about those conditions and his mental state in 1981. I'm very sorry for what I did. I have tremendous remorse for what I did in 1981. March 30th, 1981, President Ronald Reagan came very close to dying. A bullet shot by John Hinckley Jr. struck the president, coming within an inch of his heart. Three other bullets paralyzed White House Press Secretary James Brady and wounded Officer Tom Delahanty and Secret Service Agent Tim McCarthy. And describe the kind of person that you were at 25. I was a uh, mixed up confused 25 year old. I was dropping in and out of college. I was isolated from my family, isolated from God. That frame of mind and an obsession with actress Jodie Foster led him to shooting President Ronald Reagan as he left the Washington Hilton Hotel. I always thought he was a great man. It was just all a delusional thing I had going on in my head that led me to President Reagan. He was found not guilty by reason of insanity and spent the next 34 years in a Washington, D.C. psychiatric hospital, attending numerous therapy sessions and taking prescribed medication. I had a lot of therapy. I had a lot of time outside on the grounds. Released in 2016 under condition that he live with his mother in Williamsburg, perform volunteer work, and record any browser history on his computer. Over time, the court granted him more freedom. From about 2003 until 2016, I was getting incremental steps out of the hospital. Three days, five days, seven days. But now Hinckley wants to move on from his past and asks the biggest question of all, can you forgive me? I don't, I don't dwell on the past, I try not to. I mean, I rarely even think about the person I was back then because it's such a depressing scene. Hinckley wants to be able to perform live music, having written songs for most of his life. Coming up at 6 o'clock, we'll talk about his efforts to become a folk singer. Ashley Knight, 10 on your side.